You talk about the finite mind. Yes. And then when I try to find my mind, I don't find anything. It's just thoughts. And I always understood Ra Ramana Maharshi called it just a bundle of thoughts. Yes. At least that's what I read somewhere. Maybe that wasn't the right translation or something. But it does seem like the mind is like, is it a functionality? Is it part of the whirlpool? And some people have better minds than other people. I mean, you know, some people are slow, some people are fast. Yes. I, it just confuses me as to what exactly the mind is and what, why do we have one. Okay. So, <laughs> if we do. <laughs> I use the word mind in two different ways. I use it in, in a very specific way just to mean thoughts and images as opposed to the perception of this room. Which, that, that's a perception or as opposed to a sensation which would be a headache for instance. So sometimes I use the word mind very narrowly basically to mean thoughts or thoughts and images. But I also use the term in a more general way to include all thoughts, sensations, and perceptions, all thoughts, feelings, sensations, and perceptions. So there, the term mind covers everything that we experience objectively. And actually, when Ramana Maharshi uses the word thoughts, he just said a bundle of thoughts. What he meant was a bundle of thoughts and perceptions. Although the word he used was thoughts, he, he, would, he really meant the totality of objective experience. That's the finite mind. Why? Because everything that is experienced objectively is finite. It has a limit, either in time or space. So those are the two ways in which I use the word mind. What is mind? If we explore the stuff that mind is made of, all that's there is consciousness. Right. And in some traditions, instead of calling objective experience mind and its essential reality or the stuff that it is made of consciousness they, they call it they don't make they don't have two different words they say that there is the finite mind thoughts sensations and perceptions but the original mind they, they call it consciousness that the original nature of the mind before it has been colored by thought and perception is what, what we here call consciousness or awareness or it's sometimes called pure mind in Buddhism. And there's something um, very efficient about that. I, I, I like that use of the word mind. In other words, a mind objectively is thoughts, sensations, and perceptions. But the subjective face of the mind, the original mind, pure mind, is just empty mind. Empty mind before it has taken the shape of thought and perception. There's something to be said for not giving it another word. In the same way that to call, to distinguish between a screen and an image can be quite confusing. It suggests that there are two things, one called an image and one called a screen. So certain traditions don't do that. They talk about the, the, the um, they talk about the, the colorless screen and the colored screen the original mind and the finite mind. It's all the same stuff. But the finite mind is the infinite mind colored or assuming the form of a limitation. So sometimes here we call that consciousness. Consciousness is the pure mind, the original mind. And then mind is consciousness objectified. Consciousness taking the form of thought and perception. So the finite mind is the image. Pure mind or pure consciousness is the screen. They're the same thing. The screen is the essence of the image. It is the reality of the image. The image is a temporary coloring of the screen. Pure mind, or the original mind, or pure consciousness, is the essential nature of experience. Pure consciousness. It is this pure consciousness that colors itself in the form of thought and perception and appears as the world. So we could say that the finite mind is consciousness objectified. And 
be more specific, we could say that th th that um, time is consciousness objectified by thought. Space is consciousness objectified by perception. But that's that's unnecessary detail. That's just for those that want to go a little bit more. Mm. But but don't worry about that uh, distinction. The, the, the distinction is the finite mind is the objective face of reality. The original mind or pure consciousness is the subjective face of reality, but they're two sides of the same reality. Why do we have a finite mind or why, why is there such a thing as a finite mind? Because if there was no finite mind, no manifestation would come into existence. There would just be empty awareness. <laughs> but aw aw empty awareness, that, that there is this, it, it because in empty awareness there is no knowledge of anything other than itself. In other words, there is no duality. Empty awareness is identical to love. It is love. There's no duality in awareness's experience of itself. That is the experience of love or peace. And it is in the nature of love or peace to, to manifest itself. So that there is this natural movement of consciousness to appear as the world, to, to celebrate itself in the form of manifestation. And in order to do that, it needs to take the form of finite experience. So it is consciousness itself that takes the form of the mind in order to bring manifestation into apparent existence. Mm. In other words, the, the mind is, a, we could say it is a function of consciousness. It is the function through which consciousness brings manifestation into existence. And in order to do, to do so, it has to seem to limit itself. It seems to limit the knowing of its own infinite being. It turns away from the knowing of its own infinite being. And that enables it to know something finite called all of this. And it does this freely. It freely assumes limitations, just as the screen freely limits itself in order to appear as the movie. It is an act of love the same impulse of a, of a mother giving birth to a child, freely limiting herself in order to bring forth her love, in order to manifest her love in form. It's, it, it's the same impulse, the impulse of love to create, to manifest. Mm. 